This is the Linear Algebra Lectures video series. You can find more information about this video as well as a link to the written textbook in the description below. Stick around to the end of the video to learn more about this video series and the associated teaching and learning tools I've created for it. Lecture 1, Introduction to Linear Algebra. Our objectives for this lecture are to recognize a linear equation and a system of linear equations, and to identify solutions or non-solutions of a system of linear equations. First, let's look at the definition of a linear equation. This is an equation that can be written in the form a1x1 plus a2x2 plus 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 and so on through anxn equals b. So the x's are the variables, and the numbers a1, a2, and so on are called the coefficients. So for example, the equation 2x plus y minus 8z equals 10 is a linear equation. Let's think about what the coefficients of this linear equation would be. Well, the coefficient of x is 2. We don't see a number in front of the y, but that means the coefficient would be 1. And then the coefficient of z is negative 8. Remember, 10 is not technically a coefficient because it's the number on the other side of the equal sign. Here's another example. What are the coefficients of this linear equation? Well, you might notice that there's no number in front of the x1, but that means that there's a 1 there, so their coefficient of x1 is negative 1. The variable x2 is missing, so we could insert it with a coefficient of 0, so the coefficient of x2 is 0. And the coefficient of x3 is pi, and the coefficient of x4 is negative the square root of 2. So this illustrates that the coefficients can be 1 or negative 1 or 0, or even irrational numbers like pi or negative the square root of 2. Here's another linear equation. But notice that this linear equation is not in the standard form that we've been talking about. So how can we fix that? Well, first we'd have to rewrite this equation in that standard form. One way to do that would be to add 4x to both sides and subtract 6 from both sides. When we do that, we get the equation 6x minus y equals 7. And in this form, the coefficients are 6 and negative 1. But that's not the only way that we could have taken this equation and written it in standard form. Instead, we could have subtracted 2x from both sides, added y to both sides, and subtracted 13 from both sides. That gives us the equation negative 7 equals negative 6 plus y, which we can flip around and write in the form negative 6x plus y equals negative 7. And in that form, the coefficients are negative 6 and 1. This example illustrates that the same equation can be written in different forms. Here's another example. This equation is not linear. Look at this equation and think about what are the different things that you see in this equation that make this a nonlinear equation. Well, the square root of x, we don't have square roots in our linear equation, certainly not square roots of variables. We saw square roots of numbers as coefficients, that's okay, but the square root of a variable is not. 1 over y, we can't have division by variables in a linear equation. And then we also have two variables multiplied together, that's another thing that's not allowed in terms of having a linear equation. Now that we've identified what a linear equation is, what we're going to be interested in are solutions of linear equations. A solution of an equation is a value for each of the variables in the equation that makes the equation true. So for example, in the equation x minus 4y minus 6z equals 17, the values x equals 3, y equals 4, and z equals 5 form a solution to that equation. And you can check that by plugging in 3 for x, 4 for y, and negative 5 for z. When we do that, we see that in fact 17 equals 17, so this is a solution. Now a system of linear equations is a collection of one or more linear equations that involve the same variables. Here we see an example of a system of linear equations that has two equations and three variables. Notice that the variable x2 is missing from the second equation, but that's okay. And again, we could manually insert that if we wanted to with a coefficient of zero. Now, a solution of a system of linear equations is a value for each of the variables that makes all of the equations true simultaneously. We can write our solutions as ordered tuples, which is parentheses with the values of the variables listed in between the parentheses separated by commas. The first value is the value of the first variable, the second value is the value of the second variable, and so on. So as an example, the ordered triple, negative 3, comma, negative 8, comma, 4, turns out to not be a solution of this system of equations. How do we check that? Well, we first substitute our values into the first equation to see what happens, and when we do that, we find that the values make the first equation true. But that doesn't tell us one way or the other whether this is a solution or not. Remember, to be a solution of a system of equations, all of the equations would have to be true all at the same time. So now we have to check the second equation, 
And when we do that, we see that the left-hand side does not equal the right-hand side. And that's what tells us that this is not a solution of this system of equations. Now, on the other hand, the ordered triple 5, 6.5, 3 is a solution of this system of equations. And again, we can verify that by checking. We plug the values into both equations, and only once we verify that the values make both equations true can we confidently say that this is a solution of this system of equations. Now this leaves us with some unanswered questions. Given a system of linear equations, how can we tell whether the system has no solutions at all, one unique solution, or more than one solution? And when a system does have one or more solutions, how do we find those solutions? Those would be the questions that we'll be working on as we proceed further into our course. Thanks for watching this video lecture. You can find links to the other videos in this series and to the written textbook in the description below. If you're an instructor, you can contact me for more information about the over 300 online linear algebra homework problems that I've created for the free MyOpenMath platform.